What's up, my love bugs and love muffins? This is Mama Love. And I am here with an update video on my move. So far, how everything been going since I've been in Michigan and how I've been feeling. And, uh, it's been great being back home. However, I feel like a bag lady, y'all. <laughs> Living out my bag, y'all. Um... I got a move-in date of July 22nd, yes, and you might as well say, well, today is the 18th now, because it's late, so, um, what, Monday, was that Monday or Tuesday, um, one of those days, but, um, I'll be moving into my place, um, and I'm very happy, I'm at peace, um, I've been a real good feeling reuniting with family and friends and saints and just back on my turf, y'all, just feeling good. And I'm just thankful. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to be back at home. Um, I don't think I'll ever leave Michigan again as far as any place else to live. This is my home and this is where I'll be. Yes, I'm used to the cold weather. It was ongoing beautiful weather in Georgia, but, you know, that's all right, you know, um, I used to the winter times. I'm used to my 10 inches of snow and one day and then the next day is summertime. Then the next day is spring. I know how it go, Michigan. So I'm I'm just um I'm I'm happy. I'm 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 so happy, you know. <laughs> uh me and the kids is like the back of our car look like we live in it, you know, cuz we got like so much clothes that we didn't want to leave in storage that personal needs and things and stuff that we had to bring with us and and then we didn't want to bring them in um you know you can't bring everything in you know when you you know you stand with somebody or whatever it's no problem doing that but i pretty much don't prefer to crowd their space like that i'm just that type of person you know stand with family and friends and everything and uh, i know my sister is um uh, not like that uh, Keishandra, she has been such a blessing i'm here at her place now i've been here every time i come to michigan i park at Keishandra's house um I know I could have went elsewhere and things like that, um, but, you know, always me and her was, you know, close and I always come here and I'm just grateful for her. Um, it's like I'm at home, you know what I'm saying? Um, she never makes me feel, you know, no type of way um, at all. She always makes me feel welcome and comfortable. And when the time comes, y'all, I'm going to bless Kishandra. God's going to bless me to be able to bless her. Um, tremendously. I want to bless her. Um, I'm just thankful to have a friend like that. It's just been real comfortable for me. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, you got to be in your own. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm just ready to just decorate and have my own touch. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm so happy, y'all. I'm so happy. I will say this. I will. I can look right out my my bedroom window or my living room window, and I'm right across from the pool. That pool was so beautiful. It just looks so elegant, and it's so just the way it, they got it set up and shaped. It looks like a a retreat, like I'm on vacation or something. It's beautiful. I'm thankful. God is good, y'all. He's just been so good to me. I just been. Just seeing him open doors before my eyes. Just a lot of things that he has done for me and my kids, you know. Um, he's also, he's so mindful of us, you know. Where you can put your, you know, y'all don't put your trust in man. Don't. Don't put your trust in man. The Bible speaks to that. Um, man will fail you every time. Man will fail you. Don't put your trust in man. Put your trust in God, you know. He is your very present help in a time of trouble. He is the one to make a way for you out of no way. He's he's just amazing, you know. I he, he he's never failed me, y'all. Let's put it like that. I'm not afraid of and ashamed of my struggles in my life, because God is always the one who has brought me out every time. You know, it's always been a testimony. Sometimes you could go through things in your life, and you wonder why am I going through this. It's a purpose for it, y'all. It's a purpose so that you can have a great, victorious testimony one day. And as you can share with others to get them through in their going through season. Um, 
God blesses us so to do so. Uh, the Bible says that we are overcomers by the words of our testimony. And when we testify uh, unto the goodness of God and all the things that he has done for us, we're victorious. We're, we're overcomers of that. And he takes us a little higher because while our testimony is telling of him and his goodness and his blessings and his blessing other people's lives that then lost hope somewhere along the way. They're just sitting there saying, that's not going to happen for me. You know, I see this situation in my life and this is happening and this is turned upside down and it's bill after bill. And, um, I don't know where I'm going to stay. Um, I got an eviction notice. Um, I got shut off notices. Um, my dog died. Um, my kids was in jail or something happened with their grades. Eric got kicked out of school. Anything. You know what I'm saying? Um, you may see somebody else that went through the same thing. God has sent somebody along the same way to give you that testimony. You know, to give you a testimony. Um, so that they'll hear that and have hope. You know, that's, that'll, that, that will encourage them your testimony, your words, because they be then saw what you went through and know that God will do it for them, you know? And so you'll get blessed because you're sharing his goodness. Always, um, when you, when, when we, uh, share the gospel of Jesus Christ, most of us think that it's always got to be behind the pulpit and it's always got to be in words, but sometimes your life, your life is a testimony. The way you live your life before people, the way, um, you go out and tell others, you know, um, sometimes you, you don't have to talk, but sometimes you show it. Somebody see the blessings in your life, how you struggle and how God has blessed you and changed and turned your life around. That's a blessing. That is a testimony unto God. That is a, uh, a witness unto him to others. Like, Hey, he did it for her. Maybe he'll do it for me, you know? And that person tells you how they overcame this and overcame that, how, you know, God has done a lot of things, you know, um, especially in my life. Um, I used to be a smoker. I used to smoke cigarettes and God delivered me. I started when I was 21 and, um, I, so when I was 21, what, what year was that? Lord, cause like 19, 19, 90, 1991, 1991, I had started smoking and God delivered me in 2005. He delivered me from cigarettes in one day. Yes, and one day God delivered me. And how we done it was, um, he used my brother. Um, my brother had called and was asking me what was on my mind. And I sounded down and I said, nothing, Junior. I just, you know, I felt kind of down because, you know, I want to quit smoking, you know. I have a problem with smoking cigarettes and I was one of them ones that, um, you know, go to church and still fighting cigarettes and I would go talk to my bishop about it. And I'll tell him, oh, Bishop, I still smoke. I'm having a problem with smoking. He said, God going to deliver you. Just keep on coming. You just keep on coming. God going to deliver you from them cigarettes. He was like, but don't stop coming, though. Don't give up, you know. Don't stop trying. But if you, if you, if you, you know, re revert to smoking and going back, he was like, I'm not going to, you know, God's not going to condemn you for that. But God's going to deliver you. Just keep on coming. So I kept coming. I kept coming. And God's word just kept getting to me, kept getting a hold of me. He was sending different scriptures about present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. You know, our bodies is our temple and we have to keep our temple uh, clean, you know, for the Lord to use us spiritually, you know. And I wasn't doing that. I was smoking up the temple, and, you know, could cause myself to have some type of cancer. And, you know, I wouldn't be effective uh, for God to use me if I had done that. So it was bothering me. And uh, my brother said, whenever you want to smoke a cigarette, sis, he was like, get you a glass of water, a cold water. And I said, what in the world could a glass of water do for somebody who been smoking since they was 21? And here I am, 35, you know. He said, sis, I'm telling you. So when I got off the phone with him, I had a whole pack of cigarettes, y'all. Um. The very next day, uh, my mother had came over and a friend and we were just sitting around the table and we were talking about the Lord and she was telling my friend things that she had been through and all that and, you know, the goodness of God. And um, before I know it, the time had got by me 
and I wanted a cigarette. Well, first thing came to my mind was what my brother said. He was like, um, get the glass of water, sis. So I got up, got a glass of water. Every time I wanted a cigarette that night, y'all, I got a glass of water. By the next day, I was delivered. I knew I had been delivered because I kept drinking the water. And the more I drank the water, it's like my desire for that cigarette and that nicotine went away. It was my faith. It was my faith because I knew that God was going to deliver me. And how the test come along to know that I was delivered. It was this elderly lady walking down the street and she was pushing the basket. It was raining outside. So I pulled over, well, made a U-turn, asked her did she want to ride. She said, sure. She had one of them little push baskets, a little, her own little, you know, little basket of groceries. I had a minivan at the time. And um, I opened up the back of the, the side door of the uh, van and put her things in and she got in the front. And um, I drove her to her high rise apartment where she lived at. And um, she got out and she said, I forgot my key. Let me go in here and get my key, but I have to go to the office for them to let me in because I like my key in the house. Could you wash the groceries for me? I said, no problem. She got out and did what she did. And she walked real slow because like I said, she was elderly. And um, I looked down at the basket of groceries that she had. Y'all, she had a carton of cigarettes in there. The brand that I smoked, okay? And I'm like, look at the devil. Just, just trying to tempt me, you know? And uh, if I wanted to, I could have took off with them cigarettes because how slow she walked into that building, I could have been gone, you know, left her a little basket and took off. But I was delivered, you know, and I looked down and said, oh, wow. And you know, y'all, I'm telling y'all the guys honest the truth. I was not tempted. I was not tempted at all. And I knew I had been delivered. The second test came. The devil felt like, well, that wasn't good enough. Let me get it this way. Um, my friend asked me would I drive her up to Domino's to get a piece of that she ordered. I said, sure, no problem. I was always the one giving rides, y'all, if y'all put that together. And um, she um, ordered a, a Domino's. Before she got out the car, though, she handed me, she said, well, I can't take it. And she handed it to me. <clears throat> it was a lit cigarette. <clears throat> that she had been smoking on. She just lit it too, y'all. Just lit. She got out and went in there and got her pizza. I'm sitting here holding this cigarette like. Okay, devil. I know this is another test. I'm not going to fail this one either. I had no desire. So when she got back um, from getting her pizza, she got back in her van and she said, Oh, well, I'm so sorry. I know you said you stopped. you trying to stop smoking. I didn't even think about three. I'm so sorry. I said, you know what? Thank you. Because you just let me know. That I am truly, fully delivered from cigarettes. And y'all, I'm telling y'all, God delivered me in 2005 from cigarettes. I had not put a cigarette up to my mouth and have desired one, period. Now, every now and then, an enemy try to send me dreams. In my dreams, I'd be smoking a cigarette. Like, I'm just smoking smoke this one cigarette, I'm going to be all right. Oh, why am I smoking? But in a dream, I'm saying, oh, God, what am I doing? Why am I smoking this cigarette? I'm not going to do this. And then I'll be saying, oh, why did I do that? Now I'm going to be caught back on cigarettes again. Y'all, and then when I wake up from the dream, I'll be like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I ain't smoke. Oh, my God, it was a dream. Thank you, Jesus. Because I have no desire for it, you know. So that was a, a, one of the reasons why I picked up a lot of weight. Um, because I had stopped smoking cigarettes. So, I, you know, you, everybody knows that when you stop smoking cigarettes, you do pick up a lot of weight, you know, um, your appetite increases. And so I've been fighting it ever since, you know, but, um, God delivered me, you know, and that's one of my testimonies. I don't ever want to trade, you know, well, I was smaller when I was smoking. No, I, I had more, you know, cause me, I could go all day and be like, hi, just give me a cigarette and a Diet Coke. I'm good. You know? Or, you know, I could just eat something and have a Diet Coke or have a cigarette, you know. But when you don't have that, you know, you're so used to putting that nicotine in your body. And it's like you just wanted to, you know, everything I was eating, you know. <clears throat> I have somewhat gotten it under control, y'all, because 
at one point in my life I had reached 420 pounds and um, God has blessed me to come down to three something. <laughs> uh, that's a lot better than the 420 pounds that I weighed. It was terrible, you know, but I still fight it every day. I still fight it every day, but I still to this day, I'm thankful and I would not trade the place of that cigarette. Um, I just know that God added years to my life and obedience is better than sacrifice, y'all. It's better to obey the Lord than disobey him. That's not good at all. So that was one of my main reasons of wanting to stop smoking because I know the Lord had called for me to stop doing that. You know, you can't walk with me and you smoke a cigarette. It just don't look right for the temple. It doesn't look right in front of the saints of God and other people that's watching your life. But I need for you to be a testimony, you know. So this is my testimony. So I don't know who out there may be struggling with cigarettes. And I don't even know how I got off on the subject because I got on here to give y'all an update about me in Michigan. But I got off on these cigarettes tonight. I don't know who who's struggling with cigarettes. But just know, you know, God is able. And when you get ready to give up that cigarette, don't say, I want the Lord to take it from me. Because I used to say that all the time. I want to take these cigarettes from me. Lord, take these cigarettes. And my mother had to give me a wake-up call and tell me, Reva, God been done took them cigarettes from you. You the one don't want to give them up. So don't don't keep praying to God saying, Lord, take the cigarette habit. Take the cigarette habit. God took that cigarette habit. You got to let go of that cigarette habit. So, I don't know. I just wanted to tell you all that. And we are overcomers by the words of our testimony. And, uh, Move is going good. I'll be in my place and I'll do a house tour. That's all. All right. Peace out in Jesus' name. Be blessed.